Hello, chess lovers. Soren here, and in this video, I want to share with you an interesting game which was played between Vishwanathan Anand and Gary Kasparov. The game was played in 1991 at the 15th Tilburg Interpolis. At the time of this game, Kasparov was the reigning world chess champion. In his book My Best Games of Chess, here is what Anand writes about this game. In fact, I hadn't really bothered to prepare for this game. I decided that whatever I did, it would be inadequate. He had played this line so many times I couldn't hope to out-prepare him, so I preferred to concentrate on keeping a clear head for the game. But before starting our game, make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. Also, if you have any nice game suggestions, let us know in the comment section. So in this game, Anand was playing with the white pieces and he opened up with e4. Kasparov responded with Sicilian defense c5, an opening which was played very often during the encounters of these two players. Knight f3 by Anand, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, a6, we have that knight or variation, and f4, in return Anand is choosing Amsterdam variation, e6, bishop d3, knight bd7, and after Anand's castling kingside, Kasparov instantly flashed out queen b6, attacking the knight on d4, we have a nice pin, and at the same time hitting the pawn on b2. Anand neutralized the direct threat, protected the knight on d4 by developing his queenside bishop, but left undefended the pawn on b2, which Kasparov munched. This is a risky decision and leads to severe complications. Anand writes, here I realized that I had to sacrifice on b5, or else I would just be a pawn down for nothing and we have it. Knight d b5. With this knight sacrifice, Anand wants to make use of the vulnerability of black queen and also is eyeballing on c7 square. All Kasparov could do was to accept the knight sacrifice and we have knight takes b5. Later, Anand would discover that Kasparov had reached this position in his book on Scheveningen, and after rook a5, Kasparov calls this an interesting position for analysis. Although Kasparov reached this position by going for knight c b5, but in our game we have knight db5, it takes b5, knight takes b5. So, already if we have a look at the position, White is not only threatening knight c7 check, but also wants to trap this queen on b2. The knight is successfully controlling these two squares, and one of the possible ways of trapping this queen can be a3, taking under control the b4 square as well, and then bishop d4. Or in some lines, white can also harass black queen by going for rook b1. In here, Kasparov played rook a5, but according to Stockfish, it was better to play rook a3. As white is threatening a3, it was better to occupy that square with the rook. If knight takes a3, then queen takes a3. In this case, black is even doing better. But, of course, white is not forced to capture a3. White can play rook b1. If queen takes a2, then bishop d4 with rook a1 threat. All in all, the players have equal chances, black can fight back with e5, and the position remains highly complex and is worth of analyzing heavily. But in our game, after knight takes b5, we have rook a5. Here Anand played rook b5, and rook takes b5 by Kasparov, he's giving up the queen. But if you want capture on b5 and try queen takes a2, which is of course bad, in this case, here is how white can win. White can play knight c3, if queen a3, then rook b3. The queen is trapped, if queen a1, then again white is winning. That's why in our game after rook b1, we have this forced rook takes b5, rook takes b2, rook takes b2. It looks like that. Black is doing okay against the queen, black got two knights and a rook, but it's not like that the storm is over. This time white is starting to target the rook on b2. 
and we have it queen a1. Anand writes, I was quite surprised that Kasparov went into this, but I was sure it was still analysis as he was playing very fast. Rook b6 by Kasparov. It turns out that this is the safest square for black rook, otherwise if a move like rook b4, then this can be met with queen c3 with a double attack. That's why after queen a1 we have rook b6, and bishop takes b6, knight takes b6, queen c3. Here is what Anand writes, this move was the product of long thought. I realized that any other move would allow black to regroup his b6 knight to c5. I therefore decided that it was necessary to keep the knight fixed on b6 as a target and force the other knight to occupy d7. So already queen c7 can be a nasty threat, also Anand wants to harass black knight by playing rook b1 and bishop e7 by Kasparov, rook b1, knight d7. After bishop e7, it would have been logical to play bishop d8. This is of course stronger if bishop b5 check then bishop d7, if queen d4 then knight c8. Uh, in this line black is managing to regroup his pieces and solidify his position and then b6. Black has a very solid position although white has an advantage. But in our game after rook b1 we have knight fd7 which allowed queen takes g7. Bishop f6, queen h6, king e7. Well, a nice square for black king in Sicilian. Typical moves can be seen very often. And bishop b5 by Anand. Not the strongest continuation. A uh, move like g4 followed by g5 could have allowed white to create problems for black. But in our game we have bishop b5 and rook g8. Uh, well, the problem with this bishop b5 is that in here by going for e5, black could prolong his resistance and fight back. In this case, black is almost managing to solve his problems. But in our game, Kasparov went for that e5 only after rook g8, rook d1. Here Kasparov played e5, but it turns out that already it's too late. Blink is like in a position of Tsuk Savang. Knight c5 by Kasparov, which is losing on the spot. Well, rook d8 could have been better, but even in this case, this g4, g5 can be very problematic for black. In our game after f5, knight c5 was played, which is even worse, and this taps into rook takes d6. A very beautiful move by Anand. The idea is that if king takes d6, then your bishop is no longer protected. After winning the dark squared bishop, black's position collapses quickly. You should give up your bishop, otherwise if you move like king c7, then this time you can lose your rook. That's why in our game after rook takes d6, we have bishop g5, and queen takes h7, counterattacking black rook. Knight takes e4, rook takes b6, Rook d8, black gave up that knight in hope of creating a counterplay. Already there are some nasty mating threats, but Anand neutralized them successfully. We have bishop d3. Bishop d3 is on the board, which is allowing this check from e3, and then white is losing his rook, but in return we have bishop takes e4, and Black's position is totally lost. Once the position got simplified, White's advantage became more eye-catching. Rook d4 by Kasparov and c3, a powerful response by Anand, using the fact that the bishop can't be captured because of this f6 check, winning the rook, and actually after c3, Kasparov finally resigned. Well, it's difficult to find a good continuation for black. Let's try rook c4, then queen h4 check will follow. And now if move like f6, then queen h8 is coming. And yes, black is suffering heavy losses. Victory is just a matter of moves. If rook takes e4, then queen takes c8 will follow. That's why finally after c3, we have a resignation. Well, it's hard to say where Kasparov's analysis went wrong. Honestly, I failed to find 
any comments given by Kasparov on this game, but on the other hand, Anand played this game confidently and showed that Kasparov's queen takes b2 was a dubious decision. Yeah, I also think so. The pawn on b2 was definitely poisoned, and I would also like to know your comments. What do you think? Is it worth going for that line or it's too dangerous? Leave your answer in the comment section and meanwhile let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find mate e3. The solution is sparkling and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video, take care.